This is the easiest way to get one emerald trades in Minecraft Bedrock 1.20. Everything I'm about to build is per villager, so you can build this over and over and over again to have as many villagers as you would like inside your trading hall. Following that, we're going to place down three blocks right here, leave a one block gap, and then place down three blocks next to it, come to the back of this entrance, and then we're going to dig down two blocks to create a three by two hole just like this. Grab your trap doors now and place it on the upper side of those blocks in the back next to that hole and then place down a workstation in the front for whatever you want your villager to be. So this is going to have us be dealing with a librarian. We're then going to grab our blocks and place down three more blocks here, three more blocks here, and a block in the back to create this U shape, and then just add another layer on top of it. And when it's all said and done, this is what you should be left with. All right, the next thing we want to do is come over to the block in front of the workstation and dig down two blocks, then remove the block underneath of the block of the workstation, go ahead and jump inside the pod, dig down two blocks and place down a piston, then come over here, place down a redstone dust here and here, then place down whatever you want your floor to be, and then set down a lever and then turn on that lever so that the villager is going to stand on this piston. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and place a block right here, that way the villager can't escape, and then we're going to go ahead and put a villager inside of the pod. Now the easiest way to do that is obviously in creative mode, but if you're not in creative mode, then I would recommend using a rail system to just drop them inside the hole. It should be relatively easy and definitely easier than using a boat. We're then going to go ahead and place a block above the villager's head, and then we're going to go ahead and place down a bed just on top of the roof. It doesn't really matter where you place it, as long as it's going to be able to link up to the bed and the workstation, just like that. The next thing you want to do is come around back now and break these six blocks behind the villager, and then we're going to go ahead and fill in these six blocks that we broke earlier, and we're going to go ahead and place a zombie inside of this little room. Now the easiest way to get a zombie in here would be by having a boat and traveling with him at night or by creating a rail system that way you don't get hurt. But after you have your zombie in there, go ahead and throw a name tag on him. So this is going to be Willy and Willy is going to enjoy his new home because he gets to terrorize villagers. But uh, yeah, once you have your zombie in here, this thing is pretty much good to go. All you need now is a potion, a splash potion of weakness and a golden apple. Before we let the zombie attack the villager, let's go ahead and lock in his trades. So go up to the villager and we're going to go ahead and trade some paper for some emeralds. Just go ahead and do that trade. And now this librarian has those trades locked in. So he's going to sell bookshelves and knock back and all that fun stuff. And all of this is going to end up being for one emerald. So after you've traded with him, go ahead and flick the lever. The zombie is going to start attacking the villager. Again, make sure you are in hard mode. If you're not in hard mode, then your villager will die. So again, make sure you're in hard mode. After you have your zombie villager, you can go ahead and flick the lever and the zombie villager will come back up. Then go ahead and do use your splash potion of weakness on the zombie villager along with a golden apple and the transformation process will begin. All right, so moving on from this, while we wait for that zombie villager to be cured, we have two options now. First, we can build more of these chambers or we could just add more villagers in the area. If we add more villagers in the area, every time we cure this zombie villager, we're actually going to end up getting cheaper trades. However, they are temporary and they are a lot worse than one emerald. They might be like 20% off or whatnot. However, this cured villager is actually going to have permanent discounted trades. So once we get him down to one emerald, he will stay one emerald forever. So I recommend just rebuilding this system for every villager you have. However, if you don't have the materials, then you could easily just throw down some villagers in the area and they would still get discounted trades. They just wouldn't be permanent and they wouldn't be as discounted. So it really is up to you. I'm going to go ahead and actually build two more of these um, on both sides. All right, so in front of me, I have added two more stalls. So we have three villagers now. And if we take a look at the one we cured earlier, you can see that he already has discounted trades. However, it can take up to five tries of curing 
to get it all the way down to one emerald. So keep that in mind, you might have to keep on curing them, but we're actually gonna go ahead and re-cure this guy. So let the zombie attack him again. So that way I can show you that both the trades get discounted even more and the villagers in the area will also have discounts that are temporary. So let's go ahead and cure that guy. And if we look over here, these aren't discounted yet, but after this guy is cured, we're gonna go ahead and get some more discounted trades. And you wanna, while we're at it, let's actually lock in this guy's trades, or actually I've already locked, okay, never mind. I've already locked in the trades. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna let this one also get attacked so we can cure this one so that this one is cured twice, this one is cured once, and this one isn't cured at all, just so that we can see the difference in the discounts. All right, so while the last villager is in the process of getting cured, let's take a look at this guy. So as you can see, he already has this one emerald trade and same over here, and these are permanent discounts. He will always have those one emerald trades. If we take a look at this guy, this is obviously the very slight discount. So eight emeralds instead of nine, 23 instead of 24. And that's because he was in the area of this guy getting cured. So as you can see, it is definitely worth the effort of curing all of your villagers a bunch. That way you have a bunch of one emerald trades because this isn't going to work out in the end. Because obviously, like I said, these are temporary and they're obviously just significantly worse. I mean, one emerald for a bunch of books. So you could get three books for that. And that's actually a really smart idea. You could end up trading one emerald for three books. And then down here, you could trade one emerald for three emeralds, or one book for three emeralds. So a little bit of a scam, if I do say so myself. So as you can see, this guy is also discounted. So he's discounted as if we had cured him once, because that's exactly what we did. Three emeralds for a bookshelf. And this guy should have also went down. Yes, yeah, seven emeralds for a bookshelf. So as you can see, these are all of the different versions of curing. Again, I highly recommend just curing all your villagers. And be patient, it could take up to five times of curing to get the one emerald trades but in the end the permanent buffs are definitely worth it so hopefully this villager trading hall is going to help you guys out a ton all right that is going to do it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed the really in-depth tutorial i really tried my best to perfectly explain everything and really get into the nitty gritty so you guys knew what was going on as so that you guys could make the decision if you want to cure all your villagers and whatnot Again, I highly recommend doing it. Uh, remember, stay in hard mode. Other than that, I don't really have anything else to mention. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, then be sure to subscribe and leave a like. My name is 1UpMC, and I will catch you guys in the next one. All right, I actually lied. That's not the outro. Really quick, you can go ahead and download this world on my Discord. So join my Discord, go to the download section, and you will find the world there, and you can download it. So hopefully that'll help you guys build it. But for real now, my name is 1UpMC, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.